This is also Purple Positivity Wednesday. And so let's go around the room. All right, it's a clean slate for week three. We'll start with Judd. What is something positive that you're thinking and feeling about the Minnesota Vikings here going into week three? So I, I talked about when we looked for silver linings on Monday, I talked about Kirk. So I'm going to uh, leave Kirk for potentially one of you two guys. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy that I predicted is going to be the National Football League's comeback player of the year against a very, very solid class of potential candidates. Daniil Hunter, who I had, look, he was coming off neck surgery and I had real trepidation, uh, has looked unbelievable since day one of camp like he looked like this in camp yeah and you thought okay he's back and then and then he plays in games and and i mean he's a guy that the fact he didn't play last year and his single-handed ability to impact games uh which he did on sunday uh in the second half the defense has not been what we hoped or expected but daniel hunter absolutely is back to superstar form and and the interesting thing about this, boys, is this, and that this will obviously be a talking point as the season progresses now. You're going to need to give Daniil Hunter a rich and long-term contract extension before, I believe it's the sixth day of the 2022 league year, because don't forget, he gets an enormous bonus on that day, and his, sal- and his salary cap hit for 2022 is enormous. Um, I believe it's around $27 million. So the point being is Daniil Hunter deserves exactly what he's going to get in a good way. And there is no question the purple positivity meter and 99 Mm -hmm. are a perfect match right now. Daniil Hunter looks great. I mean, if if you guys, if if he keeps playing like this and stays healthy, back up the Brinks truck for me. That's that's all. I'm fine with it. There's certain positions. But I mean, it's great. But But I mean, there's been a lot of guys who have come back here and you've been like, oh, okay, he sort of declined since his surgery. Um, Daniil Hunter, not one of them right now. Looks great. Yeah, he's. Uh, you know, I, I think the Vikings have been guilty. You know, Anthony Barr, Kirk Cousins, where they'll give a bunch of, they'll give great player money to players who are good, mm-hmm. and then it prevents them from being able to add depth and, and different things. Um, Daniil Hunter is one of those guys where I'm just going to give him whatever he's worth. Just yeah. what, TJ Watt was the same way in in Pittsburgh. Like, you, do you he's not want TJ right Watt now, on your right? team? TJ Watt, no. Hunter is the is the Vikings' oh. best player right now, right? Ooh, dare like I say had, it's Mikey what's Kirk? That? It's Mikey not Kirk. Kirk, Kirk no, is Kirk's off to a good start, but like but Kirk's, saying, Kirk's not one of the best. Kirk's not one of the three or five best at his position, though. But I'm saying if you were if if I said you can take one guy off the Vikings right now to like start a franchise or that or that you consider huh. their best player, I think it's Daniil. I really do. Well, let me let me clarify that question because. Kirk is a more valuable player and more influential to wins and losses than Daniil Hunter is. Right. But Daniil Hunter is better relative to his peers at his position than but Kirk Cousins is. And you're not starting a team with Kirk Cousins. Well, you wouldn't be starting a team with a defensive lineman. Either. No, you, but I you'd said... You'd start a team with a with an elite but, quarterback, right? But what I'm saying is if you could take one player off the Vikings to start your team with, I think it's Hunter. Besides Nick Vigil, the purple vigilante, the... <laughs> Pick, pick six, Nick. Look, look, okay. Huh? Pur- purple positivity. Cur- yeah, pick six, Nick. He's been a great signing. He's on a one-year cheap deal, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you you have – he's already given you your return on investment. Dude, what if more – okay. I know this is purple positivity. This is not about – this Uh-oh. is about praising Nick Vigil, Uh-oh. not about Uh-oh. ripping Anthony Barr, Uh-oh. okay? Here we go. Oh, but for two years in a row, here you've had go. Eric Wilson for no money – was fine, and fine. Nick Vigil yeah. for no money is fine. Eric Wilson and you're, dropped and you're off paying. Last year. Eric Wilson well, the, dropped off last year. But Let's I'd see. rather pay a linebacker chump change than have a linebacker who's making money and doesn't play ever. Well, especially when you already have one that's amazing and making and a lot have, of money, yeah. right? Yeah. Eric yes. Nick? Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. Anyway, my point is, Daniel Hunter, bravo, okay? <laughs> Splitting the hairs. Like, so you're, like, and uh, bravo, so Daniel Hunter. Our guy Sam Newton over with the Vikings communication department had this. So with three sacks yesterday, or this is you know going back to Sunday, Daniel Hunter passed Bruce Smith and Jared Allen for the fifth most career sacks prior to turning 27. So he has 58 and a half sacks before turning 27, fifth most. He's a sack and a half behind Von Miller. He's seven and a half behind Derek Thomas. And the other guys on this list are Reggie White and J.J. Watt. Yeah. He missed a full season. I know. Mm-hmm. 
He's a he Hall of Fame player. He missed a full season. He's, He's on a Hall of Fame track. 16 no sacks behind J.J. Watt on this list. If he would have played a full season last year, he probably gets between 14 and 17 sacks, right? So he'd probably be number one on this list above all these Hall of Famers. And he's not talked about in that light around the league. I would say he's not even close to a household name around the NFL. Yeah, like, I don't think, like, yeah. like, if you said, Daniil Hunter, NFL fans around the country, right. who does he play for and what does he yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> who is your daddy? What does he do? Get the toys to the carpet. <laughs> I don't think I don't think people would really know. All right, Declan, like purple that. positivity. You like after two road games and after a whole season of being away from fans for the most part, you get a full pack 67,000 screaming fans at U.S. Bank Stadium this Sunday. And I haven't been to a game since, uh, actually, the Minneapolis Miracle, I, I believe. Even No, not Minneapolis Miracle. Since 2019, excuse me. I love this stadium. Even though I haven't experienced it as a fan, just even being in the press box, it is an insanely raucous, fun, loud place to be. Um, football games in person are a lot different than on your couch. It, it's I, I think uh, football is more of a couch sport, but at U.S. Bank Stadium, completely different experience. It, it rattles opposing quarterbacks. It's loud. It gets crazy. I love that this place is going to be back and being a sellout. They're going to rattle Russell Wilson, hopefully. Uh, I'm glad that U.S. Bank Stadium is back and rocking, and the Vikings are going to feed off that. It should be fun, right? I mean, this, and, and I, I, I just think if finally the Seahawks have to deal with this <laughs> instead of the other way around. <laughs> so it should be a blast. And it, remember a couple of those games last year where it's empty and Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan oh, are getting terrible. the Vikings defensive players to jump there in is, their home stadium? So I, I saw I saw the, the Wolves, the Wild, the Twins, and Vikings play with no fans, and it wasn't even close. The Vikings yeah. was the weirdest and the worst. It, it was like being at a Saturday morning youth soccer game mm -hmm. it was the stadium is so big it's and it's just and so Judd weird. goes to a lot of saturday morning youth soccer games mesh just shorts al alone in his mesh trench. shorts oh. and a t-shirt i go to a lot of stuff in mesh shorts declan don't worry about it I might <laughs> go to the word mesh, mesh uh, you know, like some people the don't like the word mesh. moist mesh to me is one okay, of those moist, trigger moist words sort of gross mesh moist doesn't bug me mesh just it doesn't sound right i don't know Mesh. Mesh. Uh, oh, mesh. I, I think mesh. you're overreacting yeah. to that word. You like that? What? You like that? Moist, I, moist is creepy. Yeah. You know what's not creepy? Moon Motorsports in Monticello. Moon Motorsports. No, they're not. In addition to loving alliteration, mm -hmm. uh, they are your motorized family recreation source. We're talking about some great deals going on now until the end of September, too. They're offering big savings on all on road motorcycle gear. It's the end of the season blowout, so you need a new helmet. This is the time of year to buy and save. Get some fall riding in. Need a new jacket? Get it now and save. Uh, moonmotorsports.com. The sale only applies to in-store items, though, so stop in to uh, Monticello and check out Moon Motorsports. Family owned and operated for 50 years. Nice. All right, Judd, you saved Kirk Cousins for one of us, so I will deliver. <laughs> Vikings Communications on fire with these stats here this week. Did you guys know... Kirk Cousins, that's right, my guy, Kirk mm -hmm. Cousins, Here we go. Again. has recorded a 90-plus passer rating in 16 consecutive games, ranking second all-time in NFL history. The only player to record a 90-plus passer rating in more consecutive games is Peyton Manning, who did it, let's see here, between 2012 and 13 with, I believe, the Denver Broncos. He had 23 consecutive games. So if Kirk if Kirk can do this for seven more games, he will have the longest ever streak of ninety plus passer rating games. Uh, the only other quarterback to do it fifteen times straight is Steve Young. Manning also did it fifteen times over a different stretch. Steve Young did it between nineteen ninety four and nineteen ninety five. Extend Kirk now, or we riot. What You're you guys? Gonna, you guys? You no, guys aren't gonna? No, we're no, we're not reacting to that comment. What? Why doesn't he deserve credit? I'm giving him. I'm, I'm no, not I know to, he deserves I'm giving credit. him legitimate credit. I don't without, find I'm, I'm not being sarcastic funny about suggesting he be extended ever again. I think that those. I think he should shop that those stats to the many teams that will pay millions of dollars <laughs> for him starting in 2023. What does because there's there's a stat like this. We can do more of this on tomorrow's state of the offense episode. But like, yeah. there's a stat like this for Kirk 
every six hours, I feel like. Or look at least the third all-time, you know, completion percentage or whatever. And so if he is as good as these stats lay out, yes. everyone who's ever been associated with Washington or Vikings football the last six or seven years yes. should be fired and kicked out of the league forever. <laughs> like how if he's constantly showing up on lists with Peyton Manning and Drew Brees and Tom yeah. Brady, yeah. and they can't make the playoffs with this god at quarterback. Should everyone not just be fired and and ostracized from the NFL that's ever been associated with Washington or Minnesota football the last seven years? Fire everybody. You know, it, yeah, it's purple positivity right now. I'm not. I'm no. I'm not going to weigh this is, in. I'm with praising how Kirk. I'm, no, right, right. And, and Kirk's been Kirk on Sunday. Great game. The last drive was great. Unfortunately, it didn't result in the field goal, but it was great. The second I last praise drive was Kirk, crap. and you guys go stone cold silent you know for why? ten seconds. Okay, you okay. can't even I'm process say, the positive. Can I just say? Can I just have a small sliver of time here to to bring reality of Kirk to the table and what's wrong here? Oh, what's this is wrong? Fringing on purple positivity, right? It now. is. It is. But the last drive, to be very clear, before the missed field goal was fantastic. It was really impressive. It was well orchestrated. It was well done. Um, the problem is the check down to Abdullah, who's now back on the practice squad, was was one of the more, again, head scratching. Why are you doing that moments? And what's really frustrating is then you see that last drive and he was damn good. Right. So, like, why were you checking down to Abdullah? And that's the that's sort of if you peel away the box score, I like to call it going inside the box score. If you go inside the box score and do some hardcore football. That's the thing that's the probably has people scratching their heads. What would the Kirk, conversation right? if if that was the last sort of memory from Sunday's game that we had? Let's let's say all right, there's cuz there was like 220 left or something on that play. It's third down and 7. Yep. The game is on the line. Yep. And there's no guarantee that you're going to get the ball back. In fact, the decision to punt on fourth down was according to like the, the the fourth down should you go for it bots was one of the worst decisions of the week of any coach they they got the three and out so so Zimmer's faith in the defense to get the ball back turned out to be correct but yep. if the game would have ended on a third and seven three yard check down to Amir Abdullah who was blanket covered by the way and then they punt the ball away and they never get the ball back well I, w- I do wonder what the conversation would be we are kind of forgetting like he, he made up for it he was amazing on the actual final drive. Yeah. But it's like in that moment, I'm sitting there pulling out the the peach fuzz on my head. I can barely see it. Um, but hey, he got the ball back. He made up right. for it. He brought the Vikings down. Greg Joseph blows the game, and he has 16 consecutive games of a 90 plus passer rating. He deserves credit for that. Yep. Oh, Un- you get- unfortunately, unfortunately, in when when it comes to I think quarterback statistics and the rating you're talking about, I don't think that check down hurts him one one bit and that's what makes the stats so intriguing like if you're safe you're in good shape rating wise yeah like that play had if you that play basically like the decision to throw that pass was yes. a white flag to end the game yes but you but don't I mean, really get dinged because it wasn't an interception yeah, you don't like it didn't really it. hurt your completion percentage he that gets bad. hurt more if he drives that ball downfield and and it gets picked off but i think we're more like okay i can at least see i mean I'm not saying he wouldn't be criticized for a pick. He probably would be. But it would make more sense at that point in time to take a shot to try and get the first down. Uh, but a check down is the safest thing possible. But that's the problem. The box score doesn't really account for that. Yeah. I don't know. There's any. Is, is there any stat, Phil, that accounts for that? So, there yeah, I mean, P- PFF grades account for context. Uh, football outsiders and their DVOA formula accounts for you know, leverage. So if it's, you know, they even have it spelled out on their website. Like if it's third and 15, you complete a 14 yard pass. You don't get nearly as much credit as if you complete a 16 yard pass. Sure. Okay. Or if it's late in the fourth and you know, you, your team has a 5% chance of winning and you bring them all the way back and tie the game. Like, like context matters for a lot of these Mm -hmm. ratings. Uh, But that is, that was one of those plays where it's like, Ooh, you know, okay. Interesting. That's you literally just waved the white flag on the game by not throwing the ball down the field. You threw a check down to Amir Abdullah. But then he but then on the actual final drive, he was aggressive. He was throwing the yes. he was throwing the ball where he needed to. Purple positivity. So, all right. So there it is. You like that?
<laughs> Write that down. Like Purple that. positivity. It's the state of the Vikings offense tomorrow. And also on Mackie and Joe, we're scheduled to have Scott Studwell, legendary former Vikings defensive player and front office guy, uh, to tell some stories. So check that out on Mackie and Judd. And uh, thanks for hanging with us. Daily Vikings Entertainment, the Alex Boone episode from uh, yesterday, the Purple After Dark with Realistic Randy. So we got all kinds of stuff for you on Purple Daily. Thanks for hanging.